In this section we're going to create the track running down the centre of the image. Having completed this tutorial you should be able to use custom fall off curves to control distribution and use probability curves to control scale variations. Let's start from the previous file and just for speed I'm going to hide the previous two forests. Now what we want to do is create a new grass area using this spline here as a distribution area. Now the reason for using a spline and not the road is because we're using fall off curves and fall off curves currently only work with uh, spline areas and not surface areas. So come to create Forest Pro 3 and click on the spline road. Come over to modify and in geometry we want to grass 1 and grass 2. Instead of clicking them by adding new item I'm going to come over to add multiple custom objects and from here I should be able to find those two fairly easily. Grass 1 and grass 2 and hit add. And then just be sure to delete the default geometry item as well. Now we have grass scattering over the area, but it's very, very sparse. The density is far, far too low. So we need to increase the density. So go to the density map, distribution map, set the spread, uh, the image to dense this time, and set the units to 4,500. Now let's add some variation. So come into transform, enable translation. And this time I'm going to set the x value to 50% to try and roughen up the edges of the track a little. I'm going to add rotation and minus 15, 15, minus 15, 15. And I'm going to get the scale minimum and maximum quite some distance apart so we get kind of tufty grass. 70 and 130. If we want to add even more grass we can come into the distribution map settings and turn down the threshold. At this point it's giving me a warning to tell me that the number of items viewed in the viewport is actually significantly lower than the amount that are going to be rendered. That's fine. Okay. Now, to control the actual uh, track area, we're going to use some custom fall-off maps. So if we go back into areas here, um, and come down here to density and scale, and turn both of those on. Now we're going to click on edit curve to bring up the area density fall-off curve, and we might as well do scale at the same time, since these two are closely related. I'll try and position this so that you can see both. So, firstly, we need to decide the thickness, or well not the thickness, sorry, the uh, size of the include area. So where, what, what is the uh, extent that this curve covers? Now this road is about 4,000, it's about 4 meters wide. So if we go about half of that to 2,000 on the include, and 2,000 on the include for scale as well, then we are getting the two fall-off maps meeting in about the middle. And you can see at the moment what's happening. From the center point, the density and the scale are falling off to nothing on the sides. So what we want to do in this particular case is to create a fall-off which is 100% on both ends. So let's just click, oh, I'll do the area first. Uh, let's just click on the far right point and change the value to 100. And for now, let's disable the scale so you can see what's happening. So you can see now, it's just as though the fall off isn't there. Then we want to add four points. Select the two left in the middle and set the values to zero. And what you start to see is where this dip is, 
it creates a missing patch in the road where the tyre tracks would be. Now we may not want the uh, density to be quite so abrupt so let's just move these over slightly to the sides that way the density gradually falls away instead of being a sort of a, sh a very sort of a severe change so we'll go for something like this Perhaps slightly more on the sides Okay, now we need to do something very similar with the scale. So let's come down here, set the right value to 100, and then add again four points. Take the middle two, and instead of dragging them down to zero, since I don't want the um, grass items to disappear completely, bring them down somewhere near the bottom. Just under halfway is probably about right. And let's roughly mirror what we have on the top. Something like this is probably about right. If we turn on scale, we should see that update in the viewports. So now you can see um, that as the grass approaches the track it gets smaller and as I move these you should be able to see that update live as well now let's move on to the stones and we'll do that by duplicating this forest object and making some modifications so to create the stones let's duplicate this grass forest let's name it first forest To duplicate it, just hit Ctrl and V. Just close these first. Ctrl and V. And make sure it's not an instance but a copy. And we'll call it Stones. And hit OK. We, these stones we want to occur only in the track areas between the grass. And there's a very fast way of ensuring that this happens. So we can go into areas spline road. And by hitting invert curve, we essentially fill in the area left by the previous forest object. And it works by flipping these curves horizontally. So this is a very quick way of making um, two related forest objects. Now clearly we don't want these uh, the grass geometry, so let's come into geometry and add some stones. I'm going to delete these two that are here. Add stone one, stone two, and stone three. Just delete that grass object. So now we have some small stones in the scene. If we just get a little bit closer, we can see them. They're kind of hard to see against this texture. So let's change a few things. If we come down into areas, okay, make sure this is set to invert curve, and we don't want scale on because we don't want these stones getting smaller as they get towards the edge. They can stay the same size. Let's go to the transform settings and put the X transform percentage back to 20. Let's set the rotation to minus 15, 15. Minus 15, minus 15, and actually we can leave this as it is. That will be fine. And then the scale settings, we change to 80. And then 220 for the maximum. So there's a big difference between the lower and the upper size. And what we want to do is to create some stones so that it's actually only the occasional larger pebble, and most of the stones are a smaller size. Rather than have an even spread between those parameters, I wanted just the occasional larger stone. This could have been achieved by having a, another stone object which is considerably larger than the others, um, but equally we can do it with a probability curve very simply in here. And probability curves are accessed by turning 
on here, this little tick box, and then changing the curve by clicking on Edit. The scale probability curve is represented on a graph whereby the range is on the x-axis and the probability is on the y. So we want to create a curve whereby the lower ranges have a much higher probability of occurring than the upper range with pretty much no probability of anything in between. So just like before, let's add four points. And let's take the middle two down to zero. and move them along so they're directly underneath the ones above. Now we really only want the sort of 220 to 200 range to be selected for the larger stone, so let's move that up there. And the lower can have a slightly broader spread. Now with this graph at the moment, if we uh, read this, then uh, the upper and the lower ranges have an equal chance of occurring. And what we want is for the upper range to have a much less uh, probable chance of occurring. So all we do is we take these top two here and bring them down to somewhere near the bottom. And you can see now from what's occurring on the screen here we have the occasional larger stone but most of the others are much much smaller. So the scale probability curve is an incredibly powerful feature that lets us take control of actually not only scale but rotation as well. So with the stones finished, let's look at creating some wild flowers. So we'll create a new forest object from scratch this time. I'm just going to switch back to the camera view to see what we're doing. And actually before we do that, just looking at the stones here, uh, they could be denser. So I'm going to change the density units here to about 3000 millimeters. And I'm going to put the threshold back up to 50. It should be okay. Okay, so we're going to add a new forest object. So pick Forest Pro 3, and this time I'm not going to use a spline to create it. We're actually going to use the road and the ground surfaces. So click on any one of them. I'm going to click on the uh, ground here to start with. And it's going to say, again, we're using a large area, so uh, it's fine. We can accept that. I'm just switching into perspective, you can see what's going on. Uh, we can see there it's creating uh, a template over the whole ground area. Let's go into modify and also add the road. And uh, Now this time we can't do this from the uh, areas rollout. We have to add it from surface. So click on surface, click on add and just click on the road there. Now I missed and hit forest stones so let's just delete that and try again. Okay, then I'm going to hit that, I'm going to hit H on the keyboard, and I'm going to find the road. Road. Pick. There we go. Now we've got the ground and the road. And the reason we need those surfaces is because we're going to use uh, paint areas in order to distribute these flowers. And uh, a paint area always needs a surface in order that it, it knows uh, the kind of X, Y, Z coordinate to create the paint splines on. So we've got those two areas set, we need to change the geometry to the flowers. So let's come into geometry and uh, let's go to add multiple custom objects. And there should be some flowers in here somewhere. Flower one, flower two and flower three. So just hit add and delete the default object. We're going to add a little bit of custom uh, transform to this, but we're going to accept the default settings, so you can just turn those on. And I'm going to change the distribution map, because this is very sparse indeed, to dense. And I'm going to change the density to 4000. Now it may be necessary here to turn the maximum density up to 20 million. Or perhaps even 30 million. Let's try that for now going to come into areas and actually disable the surface area. Let's take that out. And what we want to do is to add a new paint area. So let's go over to here 
click on add new paint area like so and this adds a new paint area now down here we've got a paint tool and an erase tool and simply put paint adds the flowers and erase will take them away added to which on the right hand side we've got some brush options so if you're lucky enough to have a tablet you can control the minimum and maximum size using the pressure of your tablet simply by enabling pressure sensitivity here turning on pressure effects and strength or size or size and strength so I would set it to size if I had a tablet here at the moment the minimum and maximum size is probably about right Let's turn on paint to see what's going on yep that looks pretty good um, so let's close that down I've got a paint areas on and you can see that I can start to paint some flowers in there and there If you're not happy with it, just switch to erase and start rubbing out. Uh, the brush size is set pretty large at the moment, so I might just dial that down a bit. Just erase those. Let's just come into here and set the maximum size to maybe 350 um, and try that again. It's nice. Let's go into camera view because we can do this from the camera perspective. Just paint some flowers down the center lines, add some little patches, like so, maybe we want some on the lawn over here, the great thing about this is you can really control where you want these to occur and just put them on the sort of flanks on the sides and uh, if you make a mistake and you've got say these areas here and um, you know I could come in here and rub these out but it's kind of bitty and, and difficult I could convert this to a spline and then select the spline use your standard spline tools I go into spline mode just select those and hit delete and um, and it's as easy as that and come back to the flowers so it'll be the most recent forest object should name this really make life a bit easier and then this paint area can then can be converted back to a, a a paint from a spline and um, and you can just keep on keep on going okay so very straightforward very easy to use but very powerful and that pretty much concludes the road if we just bring up a quick blow up of the uh, of the render so you can see what's happening see we've got the flowers down the center we've got the stones and the kind of wild grass and, um, and that's looking okay and in the next video we're going to look at creating the fence on the left hand side of the screen here all the overgrowth that you'll see beneath both fences the uh, hedges that you can see just peeking over the top right there and in doing so we're going to learn how to use dis to distribute items along splines using create mode we can use inverted fall off maps, use new forest object areas, and uh, we use pen painting areas, and finally we're going to look at parametricization by area. So lots more to come.